Welcome, seekers of divine truth. Today, we're about to embark on a spiritual odyssey that will challenge your perceptions and deepen your understanding of one of the Bible's most enigmatic stories, Jacob's Ladder. But before we dive in, let me share something that might shock you. Did you know that Jacob's Ladder isn't just a biblical story, but a cosmic blueprint that shapes the very fabric of our reality? Stick around till the end of this video to uncover how this ancient vision continues to reverberate through time, shaping our spiritual landscape even today. As we journey through this revelation, you'll discover how Jacob's dream transcends mere symbolism, becoming a living testament to God's unwavering commitment to humanity. By the end of our exploration, you'll gain a profound insight into how this celestial staircase serves as a bridge between the divine and the mortal, offering us a roadmap for our own spiritual ascension. Let's begin our odyssey by setting the stage. Picture this, a man named Jacob, his name meaning supplanter, or one who grasps the heel, finds himself in a predicament of his own making. In the book of Genesis, we encounter Jacob as a complex character, far from the stereotypical image of a biblical patriarch. In Genesis chapter 25, we witness young Jacob's cunning as he manipulates his famished brother Esau into selling his birthright for a mere bowl of lentil stew. The Hebrew word used here, nazid, doesn't just mean stew, but implies something boiled down, concentrated, much like Jacob's focused determination to secure his brother's privilege. But Jacob's scheming doesn't end there. In Genesis chapter 27, we see him collaborating with his mother, Rebecca to deceive his aging, nearly blind father Isaac. The deception is elaborate, involving goatskin to mimic Esau's hairiness and specially prepared food. The Hebrew word used for Jacob's deception, mirma, carries connotations of treachery and fraud. It's a stark reminder that even biblical heroes had their flaws. Are you catching this? The man at the center of our story about a divine ladder isn't some paragon of virtue, but a complex, flawed individual. This sets the stage for a profound lesson about God's grace and the transformative power of divine encounters. Now picture Jacob fleeing from the consequences of his actions. He's alone in the wilderness with nothing but his guilt and a rock for a pillow. It's in this moment of vulnerability and isolation that God chooses to reveal himself. In Genesis chapter 28, verse 12, we read, and he dreamed and behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. The Hebrew word for ladder, solemn, appears only here in the entire Hebrew Bible. Some scholars suggest it might be related to an Akkadian word, meaning to lift up or elevate, hinting at its function as a means of ascent to the divine realm. But here's where it gets really interesting. The ladder isn't just a static structure, it's teeming with activity. Angels are ascending and descending, creating a dynamic connection between heaven and earth. The Hebrew words used here, olam viordum, paint a picture of constant motion, a ceaseless flow of divine messengers bridging the gap between the celestial and the terrestrial. Listen closely now, because this is crucial. Jacob's ladder isn't just about a man having a strange dream. It's a vivid portrayal of God's desire to connect with humanity, to bridge the chasm between the divine and the mortal. But the revelation doesn't stop there. At the top of this cosmic staircase stands the Lord himself. In Genesis chapter 28, verses 13 to 15, God speaks to Jacob, reaffirming the covenant he made with Abraham and Isaac. He promises Jacob land, countless descendants, and most importantly, his constant presence and protection. The language used here is powerful. God says, Hine anochi imash, which translates to, Behold, I am with you. The use of hine, or behold, adds emphasis, drawing attention to the magnitude of this promise. God isn't just making a casual statement, he's declaring his unwavering commitment to Jacob and his descendants. Are you grasping the significance of this? In the midst of Jacob's lowest moment, when he's fleeing from the consequences of his deceit, God chooses to reveal himself and reaffirm his promises. This is a powerful testament to God's grace and his willingness to work through imperfect individuals to fulfill his divine plan. Now, let's fast forward to the New Testament. In John chapter 1, verse 51, we find Jesus making a startling declaration. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The Greek phrase used here, Amen, Amen, Lego Hymen, translated as, Truly, truly, I say to you, 
is a formula Jesus uses to introduce statements of utmost importance. Do you see what's happening here? Jesus is deliberately drawing a parallel between himself and Jacob's ladder. He's claiming to be the ultimate connection between heaven and earth, the perfect mediator between God and humanity. This isn't just a casual reference. It's a profound theological statement about Jesus's nature and mission. But here's the thing, understanding Jacob's ladder isn't just about decoding ancient symbolism. It has practical implications for our spiritual lives today. Just as Jacob encountered God in an unexpected place, we too can experience divine revelation in the most unlikely circumstances. The early Christian philosopher Origen saw Jacob's ladder as a metaphor for spiritual ascent. He wrote, the ladder which appears in Jacob's dream is a symbol of the soul's ascent to God. This interpretation invites us to view our spiritual journey as a gradual climb with each rung representing a step closer to divine understanding. During the Reformation era, Martin Luther saw Jacob's ladder as a prefiguration of Christ. He wrote, Christ is the ladder which begins on earth and reaches to heaven. On this ladder, we must ascend step by step through faith in Christ. Are you getting this? Jacob's ladder isn't just an ancient story. It's a blueprint for our own spiritual growth and connection with the divine. Now, let's delve into some lesser-known sources that shed additional light on this concept. The Book of Enoch, while not part of the traditional biblical canon, offers an intriguing parallel. In Enoch chapter 14, verse 8, the patriarch describes a vision of a crystal wall with tongues of fire encircling it. This imagery resonates with Jacob's vision, suggesting a common theme of divine human interaction across various ancient texts. It's important to understand, friends, that while we can glean insights from these additional sources, our ultimate authority must always be the Bible. These texts can provide context and depth, but where they diverge from Scripture, we must tread carefully. As we near the end of our exploration, let's consider what Jacob's Ladder means for us today in this modern era fraught with challenges and uncertainties. The image of a ladder connecting heaven and earth reminds us that we're not alone in our struggles. Just as God promised Jacob his constant presence, he offers us the same assurance today. In Psalm chapter 46, verse 1, we read, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. The Hebrew phrase, Ezra Bitzarot Nimtza Mayod, literally translates to help in troubles found very much emphasizing God's abundant and readily available assistance in our times of need. This is important to understand, friends. The God who revealed himself to Jacob in a desolate wilderness is the same God who stands ready to meet us in our moments of isolation and despair. The latter isn't just a historical artifact. It's a living symbol of God's desire to connect with us, to lift us from our earthly troubles to heavenly perspectives. As we ponder the lessons learned in the biblical story of Jacob's Ladder, I want to challenge you to apply these truths in your own life. How can you, like Jacob, remain open to divine encounters in unexpected places? How can you serve as a ladder in your community, bridging the gap between the divine and the everyday? Remember, most of us won't fully grasp all the lessons from this exploration in one sitting. I encourage you to revisit this video along with the other content on this channel to deepen your understanding and strengthen your faith. In these challenging times, let's stand firm in our faith, knowing that the God of Jacob's ladder is our refuge and strength. Let's be ready to hear and act on God's word, serving as beacons of his light in a world that desperately needs it. If this exploration has sparked your curiosity and deepened your faith, don't keep it to yourself. Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments section below. Your insights might be the very thing someone else needs to hear. And remember, this is just one piece of a larger spiritual puzzle. To continue your journey of discovery, check out the other videos on this channel. Each one is designed to provide you with a steady source of spiritual inspiration and education. So, are you ready to climb Jacob's ladder in your own spiritual journey? The first rung awaits. Let's ascend together one step at a time towards a deeper understanding of God's amazing grace and his unwavering commitment to us. God bless you on your journey, and I'll see you in the next video.